Hi, everybody. This is Jen here from Pure Juicer. It is such an honor to have Dr. Jillian Ehrlich here with us today. We are here to talk about Ayurveda. Uh, Dr. Jillian has a number of different experiences and trainings in her background, uh, but today we want to focus on Ayurveda and juicing and then weave in the other areas of her expertise. She is a doctor and nursing practitioner. She's also a functional medical doctor as well as an expert in Ayurveda. Ayurveda and has her training in that. I'll let her talk a little bit more about those pieces, um, but we're really fascinated about Ayurveda and juicing because Ayurveda is quite an old traditional medicine and, and practice, um, and juicing really wasn't part of uh, Ayurveda because there was no juicing necessarily at the time, um, but we do believe that there are ways that they can uh, complement each other really well. And I'm just going to go ahead and dive in. Jillian, welcome. Um, question number one, and then we'll weave you in, is um, can juicing be a part of someone's Ayurvedic practice? It's such a good question. And there's like a crazy amount of controversy, like should it be, should it not be? And I think what's most important are the two principles that we have going on, which is number one, that Ayurveda is all about you. So it's all about what you need, the foods you need, how you need them in the way and the time and the place and the season that you need them. So knowing your system from an Ayurvedic perspective is the first thing that can help to help you decide if juice is appropriate for you now and what that juice might look like. And the second piece is really knowing that juice itself is actually food in a very easily digestible form. And Ayurveda is actually all about that. So when we talk about kind of the classic, um, like when you go to the mall and you get a juice, um, it's often not real vegetables. There's often a bunch of other junk in there. It's often over crushed ice. And that type of juicing is not typically is not really supported by Ayurveda. But when we're talking about the kind of juicing that pure juice really recommends and talks about and the ways that you can use your pure juicer, um, making your food easily digestible and appropriate for your specific constitution in this moment, in this time, then everything, including juicing, can absolutely be part of an Ayurvedic regimen, a healthy Ayurvedic regimen. So I would love to know what your practice is and if you're comfortable maybe sharing sort of your doshas and we'll get into doshas a little bit more yeah. uh, as we go further into this conversation, but how do you use juicing to supplement and support your personal health? Okay. So here's the craziest part of, um, one of the, one of the nutshells, um, that I think is most critical to understanding your health, um, from an Ayurvedic perspective in today's world, we talk about health, like salads, healthy, or greens are healthy, or this is healthy, or that's healthy. But the truth is, is that everything has qualities to it and your constant, including you, including your own body, your own mind, your own spirit. And these qualities, what we're trying to do is essentially match the qualities. And so all of us at the moment of our conception, um, all the forces acting in the universe at one time made our unique constitution. And so we come out with this constitution and then all the epigenetic influences, if anybody knows that word, is really like the seasons and the foods we eat and the things that we encounter and whether we play trombone or play football, like, you know, all the different things in our world change and because they influence our constitution. And so then our qualities are changed and health for each of us is really getting our current constitution to match that inherent constitution. And there's three constitutional uh, groups of qualities. They're called Vata, Pitta, Kapha. And this each of these Vata, Pitta, Kapha is called a dosha. And what that means is it's essentially the basket of qualities that kind of define us. And they are both strengths and weaknesses. So, you know, for example, a quality of Vata can be cold. And so Cold can be helpful to understand people. People can have a cold heart. People can have cold hands and feet. But if you're a Vata person and you have this cold hands, cold feet, then you know that that icy juice is not the thing for you. Then you need like the equivalent instead of like uh, muddled lime and tonic in your, you know, with your vodka, then you need the hot toddy, right? So even with alcoholic drinks, which are another way that our culture uses a lot of liquids and drinks, we know that there's such a variety. And so the equivalent of like a hot toddy in juice would be using room temperature juices or even using broth or adding warming spices like cinnamon or cardamom or cumin or fennel, adding some of those digestive spices, which you can actually um, mix up in your pure juicer, which is why I really love this machine. Um, and so you can really make it a 
you can make it appropriate for you at any time. And so what I use for my dosha is, um, oh, actually, let me go back one step. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, excited about these doshas. So, so that kernel of um, that kernel of knowledge that can be so critical for us is that food. When you eat food, whether it's ten thousand years ago or ten thousand years from now, when you eat, when a human being, when an animal eats food, the food needs to transition into bodily tissue, well-formed bodily tissue needs to transition into energy and heat and enzymatic reactions, needs to transition into immunity and intelligence, um, and then needs to transition into consciousness. So we want to eat for the consciousness that we seek. Oh God, no pressure. <laughs> I don't know if my Reese's peanut butter cup really turns into my consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it does. <laughs> or maybe, maybe, the, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's part of what I got going on. Maybe that's part of the magic. <laughs> But when these things, when these transitions don't happen cleanly and clearly, when our Agni, our digestive fire isn't strong enough, instead of those transitions, we get junk. And that junk is called Ama. And Ama can be seen in the body. You all know if you have Ama, it can be a coating on the tongue, pain in the joints, mm -hmm. stiffness and aching. Like if you sit down for a half an hour and then you get up and you're like, Ugh, I got to warm up. That's because there's Ama in your tissues. Mm -hmm. um, irritability in the mind, impatience. Um, poor sleep. Um, sometimes it's per perseverating thinking. So these things can all be represented by AMA. And if AMA gets too far down the road in the tissues, like there's too much AMA for too long, that's what produces autoimmune disease. Okay. Um, let's get you back to what your juices are and let's get into those okay. juices because there's so much more that I want to fill in for people to understand okay. who you are and, and how this all fits together. Um, what juices do you like to have based on your doshas? On my constitution. Yeah. So I, my favorite juices are, I like um, fruit and vegetable juices yeah. and I really like the clarifying ones. So I love things with beet, mm -hmm. with celery, with lime, or lemon with ginger. Um, I love cilantro. Um, and my constitution at this point, you know, I have been, um, I sit at my desk. Um, I don't, you know, I exercise, but then I'm sedentary. And so I want things that essentially squeeze my liver. And here at the beginning of the spring season, what the earth is giving us is fresh greens, these fresh little greens. And so things like kale, things like spinach, things that are newly coming out of, out of the ground, even dandelion arugula, greens. dandelion greens all of those are excellent for stimulating the liver and getting things moving. So as I'm sitting thinking about patients, I want things that um, I actually crave um, bitter greens plus lemon and ginger and lime. Those are some of my favorite, some yeah. of my favorite. I love yeah. to put a little bit of green apple in there too, just because it yes. gives you a little more juice. And it also, um, I just love how it softens everything and brings it all together. Yep. And apple is actually a really good balancing. Um, so, you know, even stewed or baked apples is often um, what we recommend for an easy morning digestive component. There's oh. a reason that we give apple juice to kids. Um, it's just a nice digestive. Yeah. The malic acid. And I've also read that um, when you mix the apple mash, if you mix it with the carrot mash, it actually stimulates and creates more nutrition from the carrot too, just because the way that the enzymes interact with each other. Yeah, I absolutely. Right. Well, what I love about you too, is you have this Ayurvedic foundation, which I know enough about you. There's Jillian has this amazing Ayurvedic foundation, um, but she also has an extensive training in Western medicine. And so I thought maybe what we could do next is share a little bit more about who you are and tell us why you took the road of doctor and in nurse practicing. Um, why did you take that route and how have you incorporated all of your different areas of training to do what you do today? Yes, absolutely. I'm happy to chat about that. Um, so I, so when I was growing up as a kid in Cleveland in the eighties, I will openly admit that I looked around and I was like, what am I going to do with my life? Like I, I didn't see a lot of things that, um, kind of called naturally to me. And I was always known as a kid who like marched to the beat of her own drum. Like I was a weirdo. My dad used to still says, um, when they come take you home, um, when they come, when the aliens come to take you home to your home planet, I'll be very, very sad to see you go. <laughs> and so I had one teacher, Jane Esselstyn, who was my high school health teacher, who's the daughter of Caldwell Esselstyn, who's yes. in the Forks Over Knives movie. Yes. And so 
she was an hour bound instructor at the time and she was 25 years old then, you know, and I was, you know, 17. So um, she introduced me to um, being outside and that's where I kind of like fell in love and um, being outside really felt like health to me. And so I spent seven years as an outdoor educator, uh, mostly with Pacific Crest Outward Bound School, uh, sailing in the San Juan and the Canadian Gulf Islands out here in the Pacific Northwest. I say that way because they're up north that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love that. And um, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine um, from elementary school, actually, Anisha Derve, who um, has written the book on Marma points, Ayurvedic acupressure points, who's um, a Chinese traditional Chinese medicine um, doctor, as well as an Ayurvedic clinician, brought me to a class with Dr. Vasant Ladd in the late 90s. And I sat there and listened to him talk about the Vata Pitta Kapha. And I was like, what? Wait, what? And so the next summer, when I went back to my outward bound career, I remember picking out and trying. And I remember picking out a Vata kid and saying, do these 12 things. And she was like on it because Vata learns quickly, but then forgets quickly. So she did it beautifully. And I never expected her to remember it ever after 10 minutes. And she didn't. And I remember working with a Kuffa kid, a slow, stable, always looks like he was a sleeper board. I spent an hour teaching him how to anchor the boat. And a week later, I was like, anchor the boat. And he just got up and did it because Kuffa learns slowly, but then remembers forever. Amazing. And I remember thinking, if this is what I got out of like two hours with Dr. Ladd, it revolutionized my teaching. Um, I felt like I have to know more. So I spent a year with him in 2000, 2001. And by the time I left, I knew that I wanted to help make Ayurveda our common ground in medicine. And that's really what his mission is also, which is why I keep doing I keep doing it. It's been such a light in my life. And so I looked at going to medical school and I still felt like it was too much time inside. I had just spent like seven years living outside. I just didn't feel like I could go that much inside. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I'll be a nurse and I'll see what Western medicine feels like. And I did bedside nursing for about eight years at Harborview, our mission driven hospital here. And I watched you know, just, I watched people code. I watched people die on cardiac monitors. We did, we had um, uh, uh, dialysis on our floor. We, I worked with a lot of patients with a lot of different mental illnesses. And it was an incredible experience to see, you know, people who were newly paralyzed, people who had C2 fractures and were quadriplegics, people on ventilators, just like very intense, people with intense wounds, you know, you're gloving up to your your armpit to, to pack their wounds, to try and get them better. Um, and it was just incredible to watch the edges of what it looks like to, to be alive, or when you cross that edge, what it looks like to pass away. Mm -hmm. And so I, I fell in love then with medicine and I just thought I have to keep doing this. And I wanted to do this from an Ayurvedic perspective. And so I went back for my doctorate of nursing practice at the university of Washington as a family nurse practitioner. Um, and so my degree is I have a doctorate of nursing practice. My specialty is family nurse practitioner. And then my license is from the state of Washington is advanced registered nurse practitioner, ARMP. So I am technically a doctor, but I am a doctor nurse, which I always want to be called like a, a noctor or a dirt. <laughs> I'm not trying to pretend I'm a medical doctor. I am proud of being a nursing doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someday yeah. maybe that'll take hold. <laughs> yes. I love it. Noctor. Noctor. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that from now on. <laughs> Thank you. I would love that. Noctor Jillian. Noctor Jillian. Well, I love that too, because it kind of takes the best of so many worlds and it really allows you, I, I think what I love, and I did an outward bound actually oh, you did. North Cascades. Yeah. I, when I graduated from college, that was what I wanted to do. Oh. And it was so hard for me because I went and every, and I was expect, I was just ready to get just thrown into the ground, like just, just miserable and in pain and crying because yeah. it was so hard and it was, the weather was perfect. The mm. were great. Nothing mm. was hard. We had all this extra time. <laughs> and that was the thing that killed me. It was all this extra time of just having to sit still. It was the hardest thing I had to do on that. Entire trip. Give me <laughs> as heavy of a pack as you want, you know, make me as dirty and stinky yep. for a short period of time you Can totally <laughs> take it, but give me all of this downtime. It was, it was brutal. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What a fun experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we haven't talked about um, functional medicine, but let's just kind of weave that in if we if we find oh. have a few other questions yeah. I want to get through into that too. But you spoke a little bit about doshas. 
Um, let me just ask it again, though. What What is a dosha yeah. and how can people use it to benefit their health? Um, even if you have an example of someone and you know me well enough, if you want to use me too as an example, feel free to do that because I feel like that oftentimes helps break down those Absolutely. words that don't always necessarily make sense to us because they're yep. fairly low. Yeah. So we think about them in qualities and I'll just list them out because it's a helpful foundation. So Vata Dosha, Vata is made of air and space, the, the elements of air and space, and it's the principle of movement. So Vata people, the qualities are cold, light, dry, rough, mobile, subtle. Um, and Vata people like to jump, dance, sing, play. Um, when you think about the Vata body, you think about Twiggy, if anybody knows that model from the 60s. But I think of like Nicole Ritchie or Paris Hilton, or I think of um, Audrey Hepburn, you know, just women who are um, not women, actually anybody, you know, um, but people who are light and thin, even Fred Astaire has like some of those Vata skinny mini likes to move, likes to dance, likes to sing. The Vata person goes to a party and just wants to play and laugh and talk. Um, the Vata person, when they're out of balance, that's when they're in balance. When And when they're in balance, their mind can make connections that others can. Vata can be artistic and incredibly creative and involved in the arts. Um, when Vata goes sideways, when Vata gets imbalanced, because there's, you know, pluses and minuses to each of these doshas, when Vata gets imbalanced, they can get, people can get constipated, gas and bloating, their memory can wane, and they can get really afraid. The reaction can often be fear insomnia, you're not sleeping at night, your bowels don't move, you're anxious, that's vata. Mm -hmm. You can have the pitta person, and remember, we're all a mix of all three of these. The pitta person is, um, it's the elements of fire and water. It's the principle of transformation. And the qualities are hot, light, sharp, oily, liquid, spreading. And those, these qualities, the, the pitta person tends to be a medium build, um, and very intense. So, you know, I have a lot of Pitta, which makes me want to organize this information and spread the love of Ayurveda. And so, and you have a lot of Pitta, right? That's why we have a really good time together because we're both sharp and funny. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> we are. So, and then when Pitta gets a little off balance, but they can get, you know, we go from sharp and funny to spicy. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so sometimes the Pitta person can get too critical, um, overcritical, or um, kind of even mean. Um, and then the the pitta things that happen in the body are loose stools, heartburn, um, inflammation, yeah. things that are like red and hot. Um, and then the kapha, the kapha dosha, the kapha person has is kapha is water and earth, and it's the principle of structure. So kapha people are stout, solid, live forever, kind of slow, really stable. And the qualities are heavy, slow, cold, oily, dense, soft, cloudy, liquid, stable. Yeah. And so I think of like Marlon Brando, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, these people who are like stout, like earth, you know, that's the kapha constitution. And kapha can be really... Um, Kuffa can be really stable, but Kuffa can also hold on to things. So Kuffa can hold on to clothes like, you know, they, they're they collectors and they won't let go of things. Or Kuffa can really hold on to relationships and get really emotional because they're so watery, you know, so they can cry a lot when when and they miss people, even when the relationship is over and they don't want to date the person anymore. They still miss them because they're Kuffa. So yeah. we say that, um, you know people go people there's a door slams in another room vata goes what's that pitta says who slammed that door and kapha just shrugs and like eats a candy bar and sits on the couch <laughs> <laughs> so we all have a mix you know like some part the whole family of, of of each one of them <laughs> it's so great it's so yeah. great yeah. So when we know ourselves, it's like we can really like figure out how to make our entire world medicine. And that's what's so perfect about juicing is that we want that transition in our food to our consciousness and you can only eat for the amount that you can digest. And so Pitta people should have, as we were talking about, like I'm a Pitta person, my Pitta's up because I'm working hard and I'm, you know, doing a lot of talking lately. And so, which is actually Vata, but you know, lots of detective work lately yeah. with patients. And so the good, the good, um, uh, juices for me are those fresh greens, those fresh, bitter greens and the spiciness of the ginger can actually help with the Vata component because Vata digestion can be slow and you need to be very gentle. So for a person who's got a Vata imbalance, um, you want to give them warmer juices, more, um, more of the spices for warming it up. You want to do room temperature or even a little warm. That's like the hot toddy 
type of juice. You, you can even add a little bit of broth in your juice, which I guess makes your juice a soup. <laughs> but <laughs> but the line between juice and soup is so slim. <laughs> so. Um, you know what I've done is I've made green juice and then I've actually taken the pulp and I've turned it into vegetable stock. Oh, it's amazing. So, yeah, so I do, that way I get my juice and it is typically room temperature. I tend I tend to like my juices room temperature, but I have to put it in the fridge for my son and husband because they like everything as cold as possible. But I'm very different. But I love this. I love the soup stock that you can make with the greens. So it's yeah. another fun sort of zero waste way to to maximize your fruits and vegetables too. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, so that's the next perfect segue into digestion. And you did talk about Ayurveda and the definition of health is digestion. So the definition of Ayurveda has um, a couple different digestions of health, but I mean, definitions of health. Um, but the one I like the best is um, it's this whole long Sanskrit thing, which I don't need to say, but it's basically balanced constitution. Like your current constitution matches your original constitution balanced digestive fire you're not it's not too hot and it's not too cool you know if you need to cook you need to cook your food in the right temperature of water yeah. in the pot of your stomach um um well formed bodily tissues i'm like saying the sanskrit in my head uh completely eliminated wastes yeah. um it says bliss and clarity in the senses the soul and the mind and the person who is well situated in self so you really you're not healthy in Ayurveda until you actually feel like you belong in your body. Mm. And if you don't feel like you belong here on earth or belong here in your body, then we've got work to do. Yeah. Um, so all of that is relevant and pertinent. And Ayurveda has a huge emphasis on the clarity of the senses, you know, and when you think about it, those are the ways that we really get to like have our spirit and body in our body and participate in the world is through our senses. That's what gives us our information. So we want them to be clear. Yeah. Um, are there good tips? I mean, for people, I, I'm guessing that there's a little ama and a little off balance in everybody at some point, but are there ones, are there spices um, or anything that you recommend or juices that are good for almost all of the doshas? Um, so the only thing that's really good. So there are some things which we call tridoshic. Okay. Um, so there's, um, triphala is one of the things that's tridoshic triphala tri means, uh, three and phala means fruits. And those are amalaki, bibitari and harataki. Okay. Um, and triphala is an amazing little spice blend. Um, you can get it in a powder or in a, in a tablet, like a press tablet or capsule. Yeah. And triphala is said to contain five of the six tastes in Ayurveda, everything except salty. And you typically taste the taste that you need, the one that you're lacking. So for me, it's, always um been you know over the last 20 some years it's typically bitter and sometimes yeah. astringent if i'm really off yeah um, but you know your digestion digestion is perfect when your triphala tastes sweet <laughs> oh that's interesting um and not to be confused with triphala which is what i called it first <laughs> i know i know everybody wants to call it triphala that's it's what not, it looks like it but sounds triphala. a little bit like an adaptogen too where adaptogens can change based on what your body needs so is it kind of an adaptogen too so just, adaptogens, I would think of more about in terms of your adrenal support, whether they kind okay. of calm you down or ramp you up, that's the adjustment that gets made. Mm -hmm. And it does do that in your digestion. Yeah. Um, and so it does, it adjusts for, yeah. you know, these are the, I mean, herbs have prana, they have energy in them. Right. And mm -hmm. that's part of why we like them so much. So we have a relationship with our food. Yeah. Um, we know that if you eat too much five-star chili uh, it's going to hurt, you know, yeah. because we have a relationship <laughs> between our body and our food. Yeah. Um, and so herbs are very much like that. The idea of medicinal herbs is that they're really concentrated. And that's actually part of what we're doing when we're making juice. I am. Um, and Kim always teases me. I love parsley so much, like the yes. more parsley, the better. What is yes. that? Is that that's bitter, right? It is, but it's not as um, strongly bitter. Parsley yeah. has a little bit of sweetness to it. So it's actually good for pitta. Uh, I wonder parsley, I wonder if parsley is tridoshic. I actually don't know. I could look it up, but um, I, I can look it, it up is. and get back to you. I bet it is. Um, okay. So, um, so you spent a lot of time in the hospital and then you had a practice where you were seeing people as a family nurse practitioner mm -hmm. and you were also including some of your Ayurveda 
Mm -hmm. You know, so what were some of the tips or go-tos that you used? And um, we've gone through these before, but let's just do one at a time. Let's say someone comes in and they're having issues with sleep. What were some of the tricks um, and spices? Because, you know, anyone listening here and interested in juicing and spices and spices is you can absolutely put juice and spice together. Um, and we're really excited. We're gonna come out with a lot more uh, examples of that, but we grind our own spices, cinnamon, allspice, black pepper, um, it, obviously ginger and turmeric. You can grind using the stage one of the juicer. Uh, and then you can just mix those into a tea. Um, you can mix those into juices. So that said, you know, okay, sleep. Someone is not getting good sleep. They just can't either fall asleep or they wake up at two in the morning and they can't go back to sleep. What do you, what do you do? So for not being able to fall asleep, there's two things. So often it's our cortisol that is going to either our cortisol or our blood sugar that, or our mind that is like preventing us from sleeping, either from falling asleep, getting over that hump and like letting go, or that's going to be waking us up at that two to 6 AM time or that middle of the night time. And so Things that we're trying to do are using those adaptogens um, to support the body to be able to feel safe enough to like let go and let rejuvenation happen, like without our conscious mind trying to protect us. Yeah. So for sleep, I'll often recommend golden milk. So golden milk um, is um, any type of milk. So this can be coconut milk, oat milk, um, hemp milk, rice dream, uh, or rice milk. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of soy milk. And one thing I'll say about um, milk, cow milk um, or animal milk from the Ayurvedic perspective is that it needs to have full fat. So in Ayurveda, if you separate the fat from the protein, then it, bec then it becomes poison and it doesn't digest well. So it's that full fat, and especially before bed, that fat is going to help anchor the mind. Yeah. Um, so full fat milks. Um, and then we add spices like turmeric and ginger and black pepper and... Um, what else can go in there? You can, and, and ghee, a little bit of warm ghee, yeah. um, can be so nice for anchoring the mind. And then that can help the mind. And you can even add a little bit of sweetness, like with either some honey or some, you never want to cook your honey. That's another thing in Ayurveda. You always want to do fresh honey, never cook it. Okay. Um, or you can use the sweetener of your choice, something like stevia. Yeah. Um, and so golden milk is perfect for, um, and kind of a nightcap before bed. Yeah. Uh, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, then we think about that cortisol and then some more adaptogens before bed. Things like these are herbs like ashwagandha, brahmi, bacopa. Um, um, there are supplements and tinctures that you can add and even things that you can add into juice tinctures. You can even add into juice. Mm -hmm. Um, like I, uh, like I sleep soundly, I, Banyan botanicals has one you can find that on our website. Okay. Um, so, you know, tonics like that, that can help with sleep before bed. But if you're going to stabilize the mind and stabilize the system, then you may be able to kind of sleep more completely. Another supplement that I use a lot is actually called phosphatidylserine. Ooh. It has nothing to do with juicing, um, but phosphatidylserine is a really nice, um, uh, it helps, what it is said to do is it helps with cellular communication. So if the cells can communicate better then they all relax, it's kind of like, if they feel like their network is reachable, then they can stop yelling and then the mind can go to sleep. I have heard that exercise does a good job with that too, which that doesn't really help with sleep because you, when you exercise, <laughs> it kind of wakes you up. So you want to, yeah. That's but exercise really earlier in the day. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a good dog's a tired dog. So exercise earlier in the day. And yeah. then there's all these kind of mental things for getting to sleep. So using breath work um, is a huge component of being able to fall asleep. Visualization. So um, yeah. and, you know, sometimes people will actually visualize, you know, the thoughts that come up that feel like, oh, I have to solve this problem right now. Just envision yourself with a chest, like the chest of your choice, like a big old steamer trunk. And you can put them in those thoughts and ideas and then close that lid so that those thoughts are safe. You don't have to like let them go. You yeah. can keep them safe, but that you're not actively working on them at the time your body needs to rest. I've done, I always love the body scan. And I swear, I by the time I get to my ears, I'm gone. But I, <laughs> it takes time to kind of actually really get yourself focused on your on the top and it feels so good and then it, yeah, yeah by the time I get here I'm I'm gone because <laughs> it's like we have to if we disengage our thinking from all of the stuff in the world and yeah. put it onto our body 
then our body's oh. like, oh, great. Now we'll just let it go. Now we'll I go know. to sleep. Yeah. So or, okay. Go ahead. Okay, one last one. Last one for sleep okay. is actually rubbing uh, uh, oil on your feet. And that's actually how I got interested in Ayurveda was because my friend um, had taken me to this class and I got kind of curious about it, but she had also, I had insomnia since childhood. I fell asleep once when I was nine. I remember it like it was yesterday because I couldn't believe I was falling asleep. But other than that, it was until I was about 24 years old and she was like, rub oil, rub oil, rub oil on your feet. And I was like, that's the stupidest thing ever. But one night I was like, what else am I doing besides thinking I'm not going to rub oil on my feet? What a pitta thing to do. And so I got up and rubbed oil on my feet, like kitchen oil. Like I just use olive oil from the kitchen. You can get sleep oil. You can get, um, Vata, you know, Vata digest oil. You can get all these other medicated oils. I just use kitchen olive oil, rubbed it on my feet into my knees. And then I remember falling asleep and thinking no effing way. <laughs> I was out. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm going to do that. I, want, I mean, I love sleep. I'm, I just love my yeah. sleep. There's very rarely ever anything gets in the way of that whole dance to my <laughs> sleep good. time. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, so let's look at the opposite. So, so let's say sleep is fine. What about energy? All right. People need energy yeah. if they're just sluggish. I mean, we live in Seattle. It's dark and gray a lot yes. of the year, <laughs> you know, so it's uh, sometimes we have that against us. But what are some tricks that you use or that you would share with your patients that work for them? So it's always good to know your dosha. So in the morning for getting out of bed, Vata actually needs to have a little luxurious, slow, gentle wake up. Um, Pitta should wake up at a, you know, routine time and then have like a morning routine. Yeah. Um, that makes sense that they have thought about. And um, and then Kapha needs to kind of roll out of bed at 5 a.m. and do push-ups. Oh. But that's not for everybody. But the Kapha person, if you're strong, stout, like ox, then you probably need some pretty heavy big muscle movement in the mornings. <laughs> um, to kind of get you going. Then we think about warm drinks, um, just warm water and lemon to get the digestion going. Yeah. Um, and then think about what juice you want to add to slowly ease your digestion into the day is actually a really good thing to do. And then where you put your exercise and how you think about your day. But when we talk about energy for the day, we have to think about the night of sleep before. Mm -hmm. Um, so then that's that sleep piece. And when we think about chronic energy drain, we have to think about what is chronically draining energy. So for example, sometimes it's just the daily, like you have so many things going on in your day that you're exhausted mm -hmm. and then you can night, kind of never catch up. So if this is a matter of, you know, your children are waking you up at night, but then you're working all day long, like it's, it's pretty obvious sometimes why there's a drain. Um, and sometimes those are not things that any kind of medicine can fix. Um, yeah. But we want to support that with taking some time for self care, taking some time to bring yourself back to your body and listen to your body doing breath work, doing a little meditation or a little rhythmic movement. Yeah. Uh, and then for people who have chronic energy issues, um, like chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalomyelitis is the technical word for CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome, or you've got complex or chronic disease, and that can be diabetes, high blood pressure, that can be, excuse me, hypermobility, yeah. something that um, is constantly kind of just taking you a little bit more energy to deal with in the day or chronic stress or old trauma. You know, when we're haunted by old trauma, it's a lot of work. For us to maintain that. And so then we want to think about what do we want to do about that? So supporting your mitochondria, which are the organelles that make your energy, make your ATP. And we can do that with getting in easily digestible nutrients. So again, their juice has a role to play. Yeah. And those are B vitamins. That's CoQ10, that's carnitine, that's um, NAD, nicotinamide, adenine dinucleotide. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, what so foods have NAD in it? Are there foods that have NAD in it? I'm sure that there are, and I don't actually know them offhand. That would be a good thing. So the stuff on the periodic table for myelin for mitochondria is red apple, carrots, goji berries, green grapes, limes, mulberries, nettles, and watermelon. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All those are perfect. Can't wait for watermelon season. I know. I just, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, <laughs> watermelon. And watermelon has great selenium in it too, which is also really helpful for thyroid. Ooh, yeah. Especially yeah. when you do the outside too, because I believe there is like three times the amount of nutrients in the rind and uh -huh. so you do the rind and the meat and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yep. We talked about those pieces. Let's talk about um, some concepts, basic concepts around food choices. I love the concept that you talked about when I first met you. So I'll let you say it, but 
Um, let's talk about that because as we're juicing, as we're choosing foods, because, you know, at Pure Juicer, we believe that juicing is a complement to a, a healthy diet as well. So we're not in all or nothing um, in that we love fiber. We love our regularity. We love that part of health very much every morning. <laughs> Um, almost on the dot because I'm very pitta, so I have it all planned out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I I love the, the whole concept around that, and it makes it makes food and the experience so beautiful. So, what are some basic concepts around food choices in Ayurveda? So, in food, one of the things that we think about with food is that we want food as close to the sun. We want it. Um, we want that. We want that good juju, that good prana from the sun. Um, to come into the foods. And then we want to take those as unadulterated as possible into our bodies. If we have poor digestion, then we have to have the pot as the first stomach. Um, but we want the food itself as fresh and as alive and as close to the sun as possible. And that's part of why when you think about, you know, Ayurveda really comes out of Hinduism, which is a vegetarian culture. Um, you know, milk and honey are thought are the non non vegan elements in Ayurveda. And those are thought to be given of those animals as love for their community, which is why Ayurveda feels okay eating them. You know, bees make honey for their community. Um, animals make milk for their babies. So this is all kind of out of love. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we want to take food as close to the sun as possible. And so that's why we don't, it's not recommended to eat the flesh of animals because the, the energy from the sun gets transformed into the plants and then the plants are eaten by the animals and then it's transformed into their tissues. And then if we're eating their tissues, it's actually, there's a heaviness, um, which can create heaviness in the consciousness or cloudiness in the consciousness. And so Ayurveda does use meat, um, for medicine. Like there is a whole, you know, reason, um, a medical reason to use like, uh, meat broth enemas, if you are so sick that you can't digest, but oh, for the really? most, yes. But for the most part, we're really trying to stay as close to the sun as possible. What What do you use a meat broth animal for? So like if you were, um, if you were like an HIV AIDS patient who okay. was fully cachectic and could not digest any food, yeah. then that would be one way to try to pull in some nutrients into your body. Um, you make them as digestible as possible, and then you essentially get them into the GI tract. Wow. Well, so I again- not very common, yeah. um, but just to say that our whole world can be medicine. And our, our job is, as human beings is to figure out is to listen to ourselves, listen to our bodies, um, which can be so hard because so many of us get gaslit by the medical community. Like you're fine. Your labs look fine. You're fine. And we know that we're not fine. Mm -hmm. um, and so really listening to our bodies and listening to what we need and how we need to digest um, is a huge piece of understanding what it is we're supposed to be eating. And from our community, you know, raw is really important um, from the Gerson community, the enzymes, the potassium, all of the things that you get before something is heated and those are often destroyed. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I'm not just about raw versus heat, you know, like I, I respect all of it, but I love the concepts and I love juice even in the wintertime because it is so hard to eat a salad in the wintertime. It's just not really what my body wants, but I can do a juice. And that seems, especially at room temperature, seems to be something that my body likes versus the other. And I also like doing ginger turmeric shots or having that in the morning mm -hmm. with something warmer. Um, it doesn't have to be hot, hot, but I love that idea of, of eating close to the sun. And then our bodies use all of those enzymes. It's just the building blocks to everything that makes our body do what it does, hopefully. Yep. Yep. 70% of our immune system is actually contained in our, inside our GI tract. Mm. So when we're eating, we're not only feeding our, you know, ourselves, we're not only feeding our bodies, we're feeding the billions and trillions of organisms that live there also. So you have to, you got to take care of your people. You got to take care of your community. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All of them, all of them. All I, um, you talked about them. the milk too. And I remember when I had leaky gut, they were saying leaky gut. And so they were like, just, if you're going to have milk, you can only have like a half and half, make sure it has all the fat in it. Don't okay. ever, don't yeah. ever do a non-fat because it just rips. I, I like oat milk now, but, um, but I did, I, I, there wasn't oat milk at the time. And so I did the half and half and that did help make a big difference. Um, okay. So let's do some fun things. What are your go-to juices? We talked about that and why, 
Um, so beets, you said you like beets, you like greens. Yeah. Um, I've made some things for you. What have I made for you? I made you that chai. Did you ever try the chai? I love that chai. Yeah, that chai was amazing. And again, like those like winter juices are yeah. the are a great time to put spices in. Yeah. Um, and then summer juices are really good with hibiscus. So you can even do a hibiscus um tea and then add that to your, you know, those things that are bright green and things that are like even bright red, like hibiscus, pomegranate, mm. cilantro. Um, mints, those are awesome summer juices. And so those are, and cucumber, I mean, even simply cucumber can so be good. such a refreshing, a refreshing summer juice. Now, right now in Seattle, it's like raining and we have like wind advisories and it is so gray. Yes, <laughs> so, so gray. So so gray. gray. <laughs> but I made some pineapple, lemon, lime, orange juice. Yes. And then I put in ginger and turmeric too. So it was Perfect. yum. It was so, it, it tasted like sunshine to me. So yep. good. So yep. good. And so then you can freeze anything you don't want. And then you can just let it melt and then you can have it as cold or as warm as you want it. So, um, yep. yeah, yeah. And I love this time of year because it's pomegranate season. So I get a ton of pomegranates yep. and you can just freeze them easily. Um, I have a ton of cranberries that I purchased over cranberry season because once they're gone, they are gone. Like they're not even frozen. You can't find them anywhere. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so now I have a whole section of my freezer devoted to cranberries because I love cranberries. I love yes. them. Yes. Yeah. And um, berries have so many berries are have a lower glycemic index and a higher um, amount of antioxidants and flavonoids. So that is excellent. I love making ice cream from the juicer too. Although in the summer, right? In the summer when we're not so cold. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, any thoughts about the pure as a juicer um, um, and the true cold press method versus other juicers? I think you've used some other juicers and, uh, and I would just love to get your opinion on, you know, why you have a pure, but um, why you use it and why you like it. Yeah. So when I first was introduced to juicing, so I came to juicing late, partly because Ayurveda, you know, there is this kind of pall over it. Like, yeah. you know, you should not be eating cold juice, um, you know, when the season is not appropriate or when it's not that appropriate season in your body. And so I kind of resisted for a long time. And then when I started, when I, you know, started hearing more and more about it and I got, you know, uh, inexpensive juicer actually off of Craigslist. So that does make it accessible. Yeah. And I kind of used it, but I didn't, um, I found that it was hard to clean. And I found that I felt like I had a lot of pulp left over that I couldn't really squeeze juice out of, even though I could see it was so moist. And so I felt like I was throwing food away. And, um, I felt like the food was, the food had a feeling of like being ripped apart. Yeah. Um, and so as opposed to being more cleanly grinded. And so I actually kind of put juicing down for a while. Um, and then obviously picked it back up with pure juicer. And I find that the pure juicer really does, I get a cleaner, clear, like more see-through juice. I don't know, you know, like celery juice in the previous juicers I've used was a much more cloudy juice. Um, and the celery juice from the pure juicer is you is more see-through. And so just to say that it feels clear and it feels like there's more grinding as opposed to ripping. It's interesting you say that there's actually a study on centrifugal juicers and how it whips the produce around and how it breaks yeah. it apart and it actually does destroy the ends the enzymes and so when we do studies between them it's um, clearly not as good as mm -hmm. using what we call a trituration process where it's you're just kind of like chewing it it just but it goes through so fast that yeah. uh, it's very thorough grind but it's it keeps everything really cool so um, and I love that I can put spices through it. And I, you really yep. introduced me to spices and you got me even on that whole kick. And so we've made turmeric milk um, with it. We've done chai with it. And then we did a whole series with Tracy Anderson and you were part of that where we added spice to every single one as we entered, um, as we transitioned from fall, or I'm sorry, from summer to fall, we added spice to each juice. And it was, it was delicious. We made some elixirs actually, beet ginger, um, carrot, turmeric, we did a kale apple and then a red cabbage um, with something else. And then we took the pulp and we turned it into pasta. But um, I owe so much of that. And that, that's why we're so grateful to have, you know, you as a medical advisor, because it helps us think outside the box of 
what health is and how it can be. And so I, I just so appreciate your perspective on health and uh, and then how juicing can make it better, you know, how, how we can help people beyond just, like I said, what we, what we thought we knew, because I love, and I love the spices. I'm crazy in love with spices. And even <laughs> when I sneak in coffee, I can like put in some cinnamon yeah. or, you know, I can grind in something else with it. And I'm obsessed with black pepper these days. I'm like, it's so fun to just grind those little stinkers through yep. stage one. Um, and it's, so it's really, I'm really beginning to love spices. So thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. And spices really should be fresh ground. Like they do lose their prana over time. So spices really should, you should not use spices over at the outside, six months old, six months ground. And so being able to grind them fresh and, you know, it's, they're super easy to clean because it's just powder. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was just thinking you could probably do it with those little air things that come in your computer. Totally. <laughs> you could just blow it out. But so that, you know, cardamom and coffee is very well known in the Ayurveda community. And the chai that you made was, I didn't mean to skip over that. I got excited about all the things you were talking about, but the chai that you made was phenomenal. And I mean, I love chai. I am a, I should not, I can't. Anyway, I love chai. I love that. I love it so much. I'll make you more. I'll make you spices and then you can just put all the yummy stuff together. I love it. Um, and I see all these people with their ginger teas and their slices of oranges. And it makes me crazy because I'm like, oh, I just want to grind that stuff because then it's just going to get everything out of there. You know, it may not look as pretty as this one, but yep. I, mean, I want the flavor yep. of all of them. Okay. Yep. One last piece, which is the fun stuff. Um, and we, we were talking about punch karma and cleanses. Obviously yeah. the juice community loves cleanses. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of controversy around cleanses and then punch karma came up and Kim Kardashian was talking about Panchakarma. And then there was someone else that chimed in and said, your liver and your kidneys are in charge of that. It should never, you should never have to cleanse. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? Take it away. Take so, it away. Uh, so that was an interesting, I mean, it's making my job a lot easier because now people are like, and I think it's actually, I think it was Courtney Kardashian was doing this um, as pregnancy preparation, which is an excellent, excellent, highly recommended thing. Okay. Um, the way that she came out with it was to say, um, my punch of karma cleanse was no alcohol, no cold drinks, and I couldn't have sex. <laughs> so that's like, that is like, so the teeny, teeny, tiny parts of punch of karma. So yeah. punch in Ayurveda. So there's nothing that hits the reset button in Western medicine. There's no way to really restore and rejuvenate yourself in Western medicine. You just wait. And in that respect, like the liver and the kidneys, they should, you know, they should do their general job, but we have so much to process. Think about all the EMFs, think about all the pollution, think about the 100,000 toxic chemicals released into the environment since, since 1940s. Think about, you know, how sedentary we are. Think about how little fresh air we get. So just to say that what we are, what we need to de, de uh, what we need to process through and completely eliminate as waste in our body, you know, our liver and kidneys might not be enough for, you know, a hundred years of a lifespan. And so Ayurveda really does. Can I jump yeah. in there? It's sort of like, you know, the, and Eileen Ruhoy, Dr. Ruhoy also said huh? just the toxins in the air are enough. Like even if you ate the perfect diet and then you think about our fruits and vegetables and you have to eat three to five carrots to make up for the nutrition of what one carrot was a hundred years ago. So there's a lot of things yes. that um, are different that maybe our liver and kidney may not have caught up. Okay. Sorry. Back to you now. No, that's very true. That's very true. And Dr. Ruhoy has her PhD in environmental toxicology. So she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> so. Sure yeah. So filtered water. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And so in, so in Ayurveda, they say as part, you should do great prevention. You need to treat disease and then you should plan for detox across the lifespan. And typically what that looks like is some sort of cleanse at the changing of every season. So you can kind of finish what the qualities of our, are of the season before and let yourself kind of come correct to the new season. And so that might be a three day juice cleanse. That might be three days of massage and oil. That might be, um, a type of fasting. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do this. And the, the, the kind of the queen treatment is the puncha karma. Puncha means five karma means actions. It's the five typical actions of detoxification and puncha karma really is a process in which you work with closely with an Ayurvedic practitioner 
And you get yourself set up by um, internally oleating your body, oiling yourself on the inside with ghee or with fats, um, coconut oil um, for about a week before. And then you have some amount between three and 10 days of daily treatments, three and a half hours of massage and shiradar, which is a warm stream of oil over the forehead for half an hour and steam and special treatments. Like they can make a dough ring around your eye and then actually pour in warm ghee and you open up your eye underneath the ghee and move it around to pull uh, to detox our eyes that stare at lights and screens 24 <laughs> seven. And so there's all these things. And then at the end, you really try to eliminate from your GI tract, which nobody likes to talk about. But the truth is, is that a really good healthy punch of karma is going to help you eliminate all the crap that you accumulate over the course of the oleation. And so you're going to do some kind of drinking of castor oil or um, sesame oil, warm herbal medicated enemas or something like that, where you actually clean out the GI tract. Yeah. So that treatment I recommend for everybody once a year as a way to kind of keep clear through across the span of your life. I've done it yearly for the, since 2006. Wow. Um, and I, except for the years that I was pregnant and breastfeeding. So again, if you're preparing like Courtney Kardashian was for um, trying to get pregnant, then Often women who struggle with pregnancy and infertility will end up getting pregnant after a punch of karma, after you clear the decks and you kind of correct the nervous system, the immune system and the GI tract. Um, if you can kind of come correct, then the body's like, oh, we're not freaking out anymore. Okay. Now it's time to make a baby. We got this. Yeah. Um, the, and then you can't do punch of karma when you're um, pregnant or breastfeeding. So you got to pu put all that on pause. Yeah. If you're somebody like Gwyneth Paltrow, who just did um, punch of karma, um, recently, um, without really planning for pregnancy, I'm going to make a leap here and assume that, um, yeah. then, you know, you're just doing it so that you, you correct your cravings, um, and yeah. you clear your cells so that you can make good choices. So, um, that cleanse can be a really elemental part of both longevity and healthy living, clearing the mind, clearing the cravings, but also can be really helpful for chronic disease. So I've had an MS patient get off the table and say, I haven't been pain-free like this in 20 years. So there are some pretty incredible things that can happen with Panchakarma. And what I'll say about, you know, the, the community who loves cleanses, what we have to be careful about is you need to have enough gas in the tank. You need to have enough uh, strength to cleanse because cleansing is actually an action that is taxing to the body, which is why I like the Panchakarma because we actually envelop you in a womb of warm oil. You know, we take care of your every need, the diet during um, during Panchakarma is warm kitchery, very easily digestible foods. Yeah. And so the idea is that your gut is not doing a lot of work so that you can do all this deep metabolic shifting. Yeah. So sometimes people who, you know, when the pit, the mind gets, a, can get attached to something like a cleanse is a good idea. Um, sometimes people want to try a cleanse when they're really not ready for it. And they really need to stabilize before mm -hmm. they start eliminating. Mm -hmm. So in fact, I talked to a, a a newly long COVID patient this morning. Um, she had COVID just in October. And as of December was like, oh my God, what's happening to me. So now we're just, you know, she's two months into long COVID and she was saying, should I be doing a cleanse? And I said, no, I said, we're not trying to prepare you for a marathon right now. We're trying to get you to walk to the mailbox. She said, I did do that yesterday. It was exhausting. So just kind of like, we need to be thinking about how do we, what are we doing as our cleanse? What are we doing as our detox? And even if, even for the, you know, so for a patient like that with long COVID, she could absolutely come in for treatments. Our goal for those Ayurvedic, same Ayurvedic treatments, our goal though, is not going to be um, complete elimination of all toxins. It's going to be building up and supporting in place. Yeah. So. Yeah. When I started juicing, I was, I noticed right away that my energy changed for yeah. the better and yeah. my joints running for the better. Yep. Um, and all of those things. But I do think that it's just nourish the nourishment that you can get one from so many different ways. Right. And the spices yeah. and the ghee and just things that are easy to digest and things that just nourish ourselves. I think that needs to be my, my word for 2023 is nourishment. <laughs> yes, it is an awesome yeah. word. And we totally underestimate the power of nourishment. And when I say power intentionally, because we're all trying to get shit done. Yeah. And so we can actually get way more done 
when we're stable, when we're grounded and when we're thinking clearly, you know, we, we waste a lot of time being so exhausted and trying to, trying to do stuff, you know, how many times do I have to run from my car back into the house for one more thing I've forgotten? But if I nourish myself so that I actually move slower, um, then I'm remembering everything that I need to do. Well, thank you so much for your time. I am so excited because I feel like this is the beginning of many things that we will do together. I'm committed to doing a lot more juices with spices. Um, I have this amazing book that you got um, that I'm just going to start to incorporate more and more spices into our juices, as well as the recipes that we use with the pulp, because I really love to use the pulp as well. Um, so whether it's baked goods or soups um, or sweet treats or whatever it is, um, there's, there's just a million things on my mind that I want to do. So I will make sure and give you some to taste test and to approve and Anytime. or edit. <laughs> um, but thank you again so much for your time. We all at Pure Juicer are so grateful for you and we appreciate everything that you've done to bring yourself to where you are today so that you can share it with all of us. Oh, thank you, Jen. I'm so happy to be here and so happy to be a part of Pure Juicer. It's a really wonderful okay. gift in my life. Thank you. <laughs>